Um, <laughs> I don't know if I can explain exactly what happened on here, but we're going to just sum it up as simple as possible. He was having a hard time getting what he was having come in, go out, um, and it got stuck. And my mom thought that she was pulling out guts. <laughs> I can giggle now, because, but like in the moment, like she was so scared. She was so scared. Um, so I, we, we, we ended trigger treating. We got back to here as soon as I could and go. And it turns out everything's okay. It was just stuck. He's, he's 16 and a half years old, y'all. So um, we've been dealing with him being sick all week. Grandma's been on and off this week. Um, I know. I, it's, I said, I don't know if I can really explain that. <laughs> but everything's okay. He's right back on the couch last night zonked out waiting for them to take him to bed so um we're gonna move on to the q and q and i'm sure that we will hit on whatever else i haven't talked about i haven't seen you guys in forever uh this week has just been pure chaos so i i didn't have time to get on but again we're still gonna keep trying to make more time all right so here's the quote guys it reads i think i'm the happiest i've ever been part of it is just learning what makes me happier and doing more of it and learning what makes me unhappier and doing less of it, okay? It says, how do you make yourself happier, right? It says, I think I'm the happiest I've ever been. Part of it is just learning what makes me happier and doing more of it and learning what makes me unhappier and doing less of it. How do you make yourself happier? I make sure that I take a little bit of time for myself um, because if I don't, I keep finding myself on, I, I don't know, I <laughs> um, <laughs> eat more cheese, <laughs> self-care, yes. Um, if I eat too much cheese, it doesn't end very well for me. Um, it, but it's, it's definitely the self care. It's doing things that make me happy. It's taking, it's having, making sure that I have my quiet time naps. Absolutely. When necessary, um, going out hiking and you guys know in the warm weather. Absolutely. What? I know it's, I think it's broken, but we'll figure it out afterwards. Can you go sit down please and watch a movie and eat your sucker and play with your toys? Cause Get a paper towel off the table. Okay, so um, I'm sorry, guys. Like I said, today's going to be a little different. Um, I don't normally have him for my show, but we got to take him trick-or-treating last night, and she works late, so taking him before the show was not an option. Um, but it's okay. Where were we? Self-care. It, it is so important that we... Colton, you need water. That we... <laughs> he just took the dry towel. <laughs> I know it's just going to stick to it without water, right? Hey. It's going to be really cold water, but that's all I can get to. I don't want to leave the screen. Um, all right, there you go. Um, if, if we're not re, you know, it's a way I kind of, you know, I guess the, the easiest way for me to describe it is, you know, we're like a gas tank, right? And you know, every time we help somebody, we run an errand, we do something for work. Ah, hi. Um, and <laughs> we, 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 you know, we use a little gas, you know, just like every time you run an errand or you go somewhere, right? So every time you're doing something, whether it's going to work, running an errand, playing a sport, reading a book, you're, you're slowly draining your tank, right? And if you don't take that time to reset, eventually you're gonna, I don't know, I guess I call it crash, right? Because I do. I know when I don't refill my tank, I crash. But that being said, you guys, remember, this is a featured show. We are going to get Ace in the box. I'm really excited. I love Ace. His energy is phenomenal, you guys. So um, really quick, two rules that I want to point out. Um, during a featured show, uh, the host and the guests are kind of, we're, we're supposed to focus on one another. Um, we will interact with comments but we're not going to get to interact with every comment because this is kind of like, like a talk show, right? Like him and I are, and you guys are the audience. So yes, we will interact when we can, 
But if we're not responding, guys, come back. Just, you know, this is the one hour a week. It's like this, right? Any other, any other time that I'm on, we could chit chat, right? All you want. Um, so just come back when the show. Stop eating that. What is wrong with you? Why would a dog keep eating dirt? He knocked over a plant and keeps going back over to where the plant was to eat it. There's a lesson I need to learn today. Um, <sighs> go put water from the sink. You can use water from the sink. Um, I don't understand, but it, it's got fertilizer and the stuff in it. He can't eat that. It, like, hey, here we go. I just, we're going to, we're just going to ace the box because my life over here is falling apart. <laughs> ace, put me back together. <laughs> I'm dead. I don't know. I am not a father by any means, but. No, I don't need help like, with it that. Like it's I been a while since you, here. <laughs> it looks like it's been a while since you've had young kids around. So it's, it's quite funny, actually. We're all enjoying it. But uh, thanks for having me, Lily. It's been a long time since I've been on the show. Like a long time, uh, obviously watch it a lot, but uh, thanks for having me back. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Nice slip. Um, yes. So, yeah, thank you so much for being on again. I, yeah, like I said, guys, Ace has got a lot of energy. So make sure you guys favorite him and it's fun. He's got uh, his, his fave for fave thing going on, his fave party that he does. I think we every week, right? Yeah, right after my featured show. Yeah. All right. We'll do the, we'll, we'll talk about that at the end. Um, so I tell these guys, what are we talking about today? Yeah. So this is a, been a, it's been a tricky topic. Um, a touchy topic, I guess for me lately. And we're going to talk about, you know, um, a lesson that I'm continuing to learn. And I think we all learn, uh, but about how to decipher whether someone is there for, a, um, an organic and raw intention, or if they're there for ill intentions, hidden agendas and they're not real friends. They're there for an ulterior motive. Um, so yeah, that's kind of what we're gonna talk about today. So it's been a tricky topic because uh, I find that it's very relative to this app. Um, this app, as much as it is still real life, as people might say it's not, but there's still real people, there's still real emotions and it's still a day-to-day -day, uh, part of our world. So, um, you know, the biggest thing I've learned being on here a year and seven months now is that uh, most people are not here for genuine intentions, unfortunately. And I really truly thought that it was the other way around when I joined this app. But as I got to, you know, grow on the app and put a lot more time in here, and and it's not just the app itself. I'm going to speak to the app because we're all we're all on here right now. Um, but uh, yeah, um, it's also in, in outside the app as well. But uh, the app itself specifically, because you don't get this to meet someone face to face. So sometimes you don't get to feel that proper energy where you're exchanging energies, where you get to really know who they are. Whereas on the internet, someone can fake that energy, right? So, and I think um, that a lot of people forget how easy it is for two, three hours or whatever time they're on the screen that, you know, like I could get on here and every time I could be, oh my God, you guys, like, and just be, but like, I can't fake stuff. Like I'm too old for that. I don't have the energy. So like, y'all, y'all get the real me, um, but. I love you too, buddy. <laughs> yeah. So for, for me, for me, Lily, it's, uh, it's been a, it's been a journey and, you know, not just on here in life as well. And, uh, the crazy thing is, is not a lot of people can understand the world that we live in on here and understand, especially for someone like myself, who's taken this on full time in the last couple of months and really put a lot of effort and put a lot of my life into being online and being here with everyone and, and putting my efforts into my events and my social life on the platform and my growth on here instead of off the app. And a lot of people take that as disowning them or, or you're, you're, you're choosing to be selfish or you're not willing to go out and hang out with them because you're hanging out with your new friends or all those type of things. But you should never have to feel guilty um, or feel, feel like you've done something wrong or made a mistake because you're tr choosing to do what, what you want for your life and for what's going to make you happy or what you think is the best decision for you. Um, and at the end of the day, the only, the only person's opinion that matters is yourself. So if you're not, if you're not happy with, with yourself, then you're not going to, you're not going to attract the right people around you. And I found that because I wasn't happy with myself, I was coming on here at the start of my career on here and I was drinking and I was doing, you know, drugs and things. I wasn't a top badge at the time. I was new to streaming and, um, I was being myself, but I was being myself intoxicated, you know, which was me 
but it was me being like you said coming on here going da, 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 da. but really when i got off i wasn't that person i was sad depressed miserable and then i would get messed up to come back on here and so what that did is it attracted a lot of the wrong people and i thought that these people were real and there for me because they said they were when when to find out they were there for other reasons to take advantage they saw weakness um, they wanted to use the drinking and the stuff against me in the future they were building a case like you know it's a lot of it comes and stems from jealousy but uh you know you got to really really be aware of who the people are around you especially the ones that pop up out of nowhere especially the ones like that all of a sudden are acting like you're they're your best friend and asking for information and and all that type jazz so I think the biggest the biggest lesson out of this whole thing is protecting your energy and the the hardest thing to do for me and and to learn about protecting my energy is that you can't let people in and i i'm the one to let everyone in and then also if they screw up give them another chance and let them in again well those days are over for me uh it's taken me a year and seven months to kind of get here i took the last day off of the app i took a mental breather um you know went into do not disturb mode really really like you know analyze the people around me analyze the the reactions that people have when I when I choose to do something or when I choose to take a day off for myself and and so many different scenarios and situations where I look back on and just reminisce on how people acted in those situations were they being selfish and all they were talking about was the app and and what I was missing out on or why I wasn't there for them or were they actually there genuinely trying to you know comfort me and see if i had a problem or if i was okay or maybe there was a reason that i'm not going to make it or not there or not as talkative or do you know what i'm saying so um the, the, that's a that's a fine line to really decipher because there's people that will pretend like they're there for genuine reasons and want to be your friend but in the end you know there's an ulterior motive sometimes you'll never be able to figure that out until you you know get hit with that ulterior motive and, and go through the the rough the rough pain of finding that out um, but I think, think the biggest lesson that you guys can learn is that not everyone's your friend. Most people are not genuine and it's hard to understand that there is real ones out there. There is genuine people out there, but if, if, if they're real and they're genuine, it will naturally happen over time and time, time is meant to be there for a reason. You should not become best friends overnight. You know, I've made that mistake. I've given too much to people too early, too soon. I've opened up too much and I give them all, I give them everything about myself and they have everything against me because I'm an open book. Whereas me, I feel like if I can open up and give you my trust, I'll tell you everything about me. There's nothing left on the table for them to have against me. So we'll always be good. But no, what they do is they take that and now they go and they go, I got one up on you because I've got that against you now. Whereas, you know, that's just how I was brought up. My family comes from a small town where it was close knit. It's very family oriented. It's hillbilly. You know what? Like, oh my God, I'm Canadian. Trust me. Where they're from, you wouldn't even understand. My mom grew up with a tar paper shack and an outhouse. Okay. I'm not lying to you. So like, you know, for, for me growing up and being, being close and helping people, that's what I know. That's all I know. Um, I'll do whatever it takes to make sure someone can get by that day, even though I'm suffering. So the hard part is, is when you get used, abused and played on here or on in real life for, for you just being a genuine, hardworking um, person that just really cares and wants to see other people grow and succeed and, and be happy and healthy. Um, it hurts and it takes a lot out of you. So I've learned the main lesson is protect your energy. And the way that you do that is, is don't, don't, don't open up your book. You know, I, I, I mean, I'm learning how to do it too, but stop sharing everything about yourself. Don't tell everyone what you're going through. Keep that stuff private. Let people earn that over time. And if they're true and genuine and real, that will come out naturally over time and you'll feel comfor comfortable where that won't even have to be a thing you think of. It just happens and they'll do the same. And that does take time, you know? And if they're trying to get information out of you right away, that's not a real friend. Why do they need information out of you right away? There's no reason See, for that. I'm, I'm extremely open and upfront because I think it's important that people know that most people's lives <clears throat> are filled with ups and downs, right? So like I do share a lot, but like a said, there are just some things that everybody doesn't need to know, right? Like I still have my things that nobody on here knows. I have things that have happened that one or two people know, but when I first started, I definitely had to learn what was okay to share and what people could use against you. Um, and not even f on my sake, like for the most part, what I've shared, it's, 
I've shared it. I knew I shared it. I wanted to share it. I shared it to hopefully help somebody, even though I knew that it was like ugh, in the moment. Right. But yeah, you, you guys have got to make sure that you're, so I guess, like you said, just protecting the energy and, and, and allowing time to really see who somebody is. You know, I could sit here and tell, tell Ace that, you know, I'm, I, you know, you're my best friend and blah, 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 blah. And we, I, you know, I've got you no matter what, but then like slick down here, he's like, what's up, Lily? And I'm like, oh, slick, you know? And then all of a sudden Ace isn't as important because I don't know, you know what I mean? So like people on here tend to do that and to bounce just like kids, just like in middle school, right? Like they all got different friends and all the time. And it's not really till you guys get older, they get older that they settle into their official, you know, friend groups or whatever. But y'all, most of these kids went through kindergarten, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth grade together. So that was nine years before they realized that they kind of sort of really had their friends, you know, and then even once you get older, those friends don't always stick around either. So, and watch out for the friends that, or the people that call themselves friends that are new to your group or new to your stream or new to your life, wherever. But they, they're, they, like I, I saw, um, sorry, what was his name? Slick, Slick Fox's comment where he said people interrupt things wrongly too. And I don't know if he meant it in the way I'm about to speak on, but when people come in and they, in, and they involve themselves and they include themselves or they, um, they, they, they spread open a little gap and they put themselves in the middle when they're not allowed to be in there. Like we're well, not, not allowed, sorry. Um, but they're not supposed to be, there's no place for them. There was not their issue. There was not their place. Like people, people put themselves have no business. Exactly. They put themselves into something that they have no business being a part of or have no say in, in, in even having a right to say a word on, you know what I'm saying? And those are, those are people that intentionally are putting and involving themselves in a situation for ill intentions for an ulterior motive, whether it's for clout, whether it's for attention, whether it's just to get stir the pot, whether it's to see people suffer, who knows who cares, it doesn't matter. Those are not good people. Now give people a chance. Some people don't realize the way they are on here. They act like it's real life. They don't realize you're talking to a hundred comments and try to teach people the right way. But once they once they walk all over you guys, I've been walked over in this last couple of weeks by some people that I, that I would, would have never expected it. But I realized that's not their fault. It's mine. I got too lackadaisy with my stream. I allowed too many things to go on that they felt that that, that was okay. And so for, for me, I had to take a step back. And instead of getting mad at those people for making those decisions in my stream, I took a step back and said, no, I need to change the way I'm doing things so they don't feel like they have the ability to walk on me, to walk over me. So, and, and that comes to, again, back to those, those real people that you want around you. You know what I mean? You gotta have the ones that are gonna, when I'm gone, if I take that day off, that they're gonna be out here saying, nah, Ace is good, I got, like, you know what I mean? Like, nah, don't stress, don't bother him, we good. Not the person that's going, oh, where's Ace? Is he leaving the app? What's he doing, having a mental breakdown? What's going on? Like, you know what I'm saying? None of that. Like, those are the people you don't want around your life. They're starting unnecessary things. So just, just protect your energy, guys. And, you know, have the promoters around, not the ones that are trying to, like, you know, bash your name. There's two different types of, of, of clout. They're both good, but you know, it's a lot easier to deal with positive clout than it is negative clout, right? Yeah, and the sure. good people around you will create positive clout for you. And the bad people around you will create negative clout. Now you choose which way you want to go, but that's all I got to say today. So, so something I want to add to that guys is <clears throat> as much as it hurts when you find out somebody has done you guys wrong, instead of getting angry, y'all need to be thankful because that was whether you believe in god or a higher power or whatever i believe in mother nature because she's brutal right so like she be throwing like all kinds of curveballs in my walk of life and uh yeah but anyways i didn't want to be negative it's not negative what that is is positive no, and i can negative. see some of the ones in here that are truly genuinely my real friends and i know they are because they're the ones that they just they do the things the, the other way there's two ways to do things there's one way to make you make someone like you know have to have more things to worry about when they come back or there's a one way to do it where you make them have nothing to worry about when they come back you know what i mean and those are the people i want to be around so and lily you're one of them as well big electric mafia i'm gonna jump out of the box everything's good yeah all right ace yes uh, well tell us about your show really quick and oh your, okay sure yes okay. a little bit about you first 
Uh, yes. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I've been on the app for a year and seven months. I'm never normally up this early on a show. Yeah. So my eyes are watering because my allergy pills haven't kicked in. Um, it's not crying. Crying was earlier. Okay. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, so no, I, uh, I have my own show on Fridays. We're on episode, I think 43 or 44. So pretty crazy to think that we've been going on, going on that long. Um, it's called Heart Rate. It's Fridays again today at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So come check that out. And then after I do run a faith party for two hours. Today I am on Big Country Show, I think at 7 p.m. Eastern or 9 p.m. Eastern, uh, which is like men speaking about uh, their like men stuff, men stuff, men talk, I think it is. So come check that out. I'll be in a suit. I will not be wearing this hat. I'll be in a suit. I'll be all done up. I'm a little worried for that. I haven't done that in a long time. So there's that and then i am hosting my very first royale it's a tag team royale it's never been done on the app before i'm all about inventing the wheel not redesigning it so um i got a new type of royale keep keep your eyes out and peeled for that it takes two to tango on that so it's pretty cool uh if you're interested hit me up in the dms it is invite only and i got some other stuff coming up add me on D on uh, ig it's all there you know what it is love your face lily thanks hey, for having thanks me everybody so much. you guys favorite him. You. you have a great friday and i will be in to watch part of the show before i go to work um Bye. i do always try to catch his show he's got some great people to get on there like i said he's got some good energy he's got great people um definitely a fun stream to hang out in and then after his show today he has a really fun fave party he's got djs lined up they play all night so um let's see it's Adria. is that we still got a few minutes before her so we're gonna do our little self-care self-love segment honey what do you need i love you too but you don't ever even acknowledge my existence this much when i sit next to you and you're playing so go play <laughs> why is it why why do they do that <laughs> why are kids like i could sit right there with him while he did it and i would not even be of existence right but i get on here and start talking to him i knew he was going to but he's worse than josh <laughs> he's been, hello hello guys thank you for the gifts thank you for being here um this is lessons learned i am silly lily and if you're just tuning in you missed ace marsh talking about you know kind of you know protecting your energy making sure that you're allowing yourself to take time to really get to know somebody well thank you for saying i'm nice i guess but guys remember they will remove you for any negative comments this is a featured show so we do ask that you be respectful and kind and I really don't tolerate any bullying. I'm hard enough on myself. I don't need you to join in. Um, thank you, thank you. Um, <laughs> it's, I, I've kind of always been strict on the, the no bullying and the no BS. So I've always wanted this to be a safe stream. Like this is where you guys come to. And if you wanna talk or vent, um, this, this is where my friends get to come to do that and they know that they're, they're safe. So I just don't, I just don't i i'm too old and tired to deal with the dumb 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 stuff you know orange juice and soda that sounds super healthy water guys drink your water god bless it man the good old h2 iso on the rocks y'all um not not purified either yeah water then cough y'all when you wake up okay listen this is really easy you're gonna take a bottle of water, okay? Th I'm simplifying it. I carry this because I don't like wasting um, the, the plastic anymore, okay? But you could take one bottle of water and before bed, you drink half of it. No, you have your cereal in there. Go drink, eat your cereal and drink your milk. Um, dry cereal, don't worry, it's not mushy. Don't yell at me for that, guys. <laughs> but he doesn't eat it that's why i don't put the milk in it uh because he takes three hours to eat a cereal because he wants everything but breakfast but usually i make him eggs and toast but he got cereal <coughs> bruh i don't know what's worse you were you were the kid today see stop eating the damn dirt get over here get away from the pile come on no oh don't you dare nip at me get over here 
don't do that again. Go lay down. That was not nice. <sighs> Hi, welcome to my featured show, where over here we are a complete crapshoot and we do our best. So hopefully um, you guys can tolerate me today. Um, we normally don't have the grandkid here, so he's a little bit of a, a super cute distraction. The dog, he drives us nuts every single time that I get on stream, so we're used to him. Um, but that was scary because I that was like a the cough choke thing, and that always scares me because I don't... I don't know if something's actually stuck, right? Like, I feel like one of these days he's going to look at me and he's not going to do the rest of the, eh. it's just going to be, uh, and then I'm going to be like, oh my God. So, but that's a regular thing with that dog. I don't know why he does it. I, hairballs maybe. Um, I keep telling him he's not a cat, but he'll still lick the ground and get the hair and then does... Anyone else's dog do that? They'll like lick the carpet or they'll lick something and then they'll get the hair and you'll try to take it off and they fight you so they can eat it. I don't think I'm awake either. Well, he shed so much that like if he lays in a spot like in springtime, like right now it's not so bad because winter's coming, right? But in the springtime when he's losing his coat, he'll lay and roll around and then like I'll go in the kitchen and then I'll come out and he'll be licking the carpet and then I'll go to pull the hair that he licked out of his mouth and he's like, and he all growls at me. Arr! And I'm like, fine, eat it. And then he sits there uh, uh, and then he's, I'm gonna drink of water. I don't, I tried, I tried, I tried to help you. He's the cutest, dumbest, smartest dog I've ever known. All in one, all in one. All right. So we still have a few more minutes before we have our next guest on. Um, what did I want to talk? I had something in my mind. I was like, mm, I don't know. Oh, oh, okay. Another success story on my um, can be all organic, homemade, safe for all ages who are allowed to have juice and honey and up. I think you can have honey at one or two. There is a limit on the honey. So look into that. But since my daughter was little, <clears throat> um, she, and, and both my kids would get coughs, right? So I spent a lot of time Googling natural remedies that I could give to my young kids because you can't get them good cough medicine, good cough syrup, whatever, um, when they're, you know, and when they're, when you're trying to sleep at night, that's when you're coughing the worst, right guys? They're all, you know, all day you're kind of... <laughs> you know, <laughs> here and there, you lay down and it, you, you can't breathe at some points because you're coughing, you're waking up a whole bunch, right? And then, and then when it's the kids doing it, they don't sleep, you don't sleep. So now you're both kind of cranky the next day. What is that? Featured show, do not acknowledge gifts or favorites, but thank you for both. Um, <laughs> I guess I, I cannot not like, when you see something new or cool, how can you not acknowledge it or whatever, right? Um, oh, so I say, oh, so yeah, we. It, <laughs> uh, it, <laughs> good morning, you guys. Um, all right, so yeah, pineapple juice, but it's got to be from a fresh pineapple. If you don't care if it's a little pulpy, right? Thank you. Um, you can put it in a blender. You take chunks of the pineapple, put it in a blender with some honey, and you mix it. Um, now, little kids, they don't all do it. So if you have a juicer or if you, a fresh pineapple, it can't be like in a jar or a can. You know what I mean? Like it has to be, what is this? I haven't been on all week. This is crazy. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um but yeah, it has to be fresh, and 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 so you have to get the fresh pineapple. So for my daughter, I didn't have a, a juicer, so I would use a uh, um, a cheesecloth, and you just squeeze the fresh pineapple juice out of the pineapple until you can't squeeze anymore. And if you love pineapple as much as I love it, after you squeeze the juice out of it, you're probably going to eat most of the unjuicy pineapple, or at least turn it into a smoothie with some mango and peaches. So that way you're not wasting stuff. Um, but um, that way I, I do, I'll, I'll put it in the freezer or save it. The stuff that you kind of squeeze a lot of juice out of just because the pineapple flavor added to something else is not, you know, but yes. And that, that's where I'm getting to next local organic raw honey, I believe is best organic raw. 
right, is what's best. Um, two reasons, okay? The, it it's, helps um, soothe it. And then the, the organic and the local, well, not the organic, the local part is because if you do have allergies or anything, honey will help with that. But the local organic raw is best because it holds most of the nutrient values. And if you get it, it's, it, it's probably a lot fresher. Um, so the allergies, yeah. So your pineapple is a natural anti-inflammatory right? So if you even have, you know, like I have arthritis and when I have flare ups, I'll eat pineapple because it helps with my joints. Um, I don't know what it is or why, but that's what the Google told me and I believed it. So I tried it and was like, you mean I just have to eat pineapple to feel better? <laughs> what? Excuse me? If I replace that half a bag of chips I eat at night with a cup of pineapple, it's going to feel better? Okay, so anyways, that was another lesson in a lesson. And we're going to get our guests in the box. Are you here? Did I, are you still here? Did you get home? Did you make it? Um, so fresh pineapple juice mixed with honey. I was never given a ratio. So I kind of do half a cup and then I just squeeze or scoop a whole bunch of honey. Um, and that, that's how I do it. Kind of, I guess, how much, you know, how sore is your throat? How much do you want to stew that? If it's rough, you might want a little more honey. Um, and then when you start coughing, you just, you know, you, like if it's for you, you put it in a mason jar so you can shake it. You got to shake it every single time and you just take a little sip and then you move on. You know, you don't, um, I mean, slick, if you're down for it, I go for it, but don't go and take it from somebody else's hive. It's got to be a stranded hive. Um, so yeah, so that, and my mom was coughing and hacking up a lung and she went and she got, um, Corsetin, I think it was, or, and then she had these little other cough drops that, that smelled terrible. And I'm like, how can you even eat these? And she just kept coughing and coughing. And so I went to the store and I bought her the pineapple and I made her the concoction. And the next day when I went over there, because you guys know I go over there every day to watch grandma. Well, not every day, but a lot of days in the week. Um, and uh, my mom was like, I can't believe that works. She's like, dad came down at like 2.30 and got me it and then gave me a sip. And we both went right back to sleep. So like, it really worked because my, they'll tell me if I'm an idiot and it didn't work. They've got no problem. So now I've got my mom and my grandma at least use CBD for their ouchies and their pains. Um, I did think I was saying Drea, she's on her way. She was on her way home from work, y'all. She had a long extra night at work. So she, I do believe is coming. So I'm going to keep talking for a few minutes, but I've learned CBD. I'll, when, when I, my, you guys can see, see my arthritis see it? So when it gets cold, I will start my days. I'll put CBD on my fingers. I will put my gloves on and then I turn the heating pad on for my back and I will kind of lay like this for 10 minutes with my hands between the heating pad and my back, right? And that is how on some days I have got to get my fingers moving because by the time I, I, I don't know, I've never even broken a finger. You guys can see they're all crooked and crazy and whatever. But it works for that. My mom's been using it. She's my grandma uses it. And now I've got another natural remedy. So like, I'm just saying, y'all, you don't need to hello. There she is. Uh, you don't need to spend buku bucks on all this expensive things, guys. Um, and I've come to find out that I've wasted so much money between cough medicines and pain pills and all kinds of stuff. And what's fixed me has been pretty much natural. Like, yes, they have to put the, the CBD into the lotion that I use, but I like the lotion. I don't like the drops. I don't like the taste of it. It's, what? I don't know. I know I'm weird. But so the, I use the cream, but like the pineapple juice and honey, who would have, 
And anybody I tell, you're a good girl. Anybody I tell, they don't even, they're like, what do you mean pineapple juice and honey? And everybody that's tried it is like, oh my God, it works. And I'm like, you're welcome. And you can give it to your toddler so you can sleep tonight. All right, guys, let's get, uh, is, is it Drea, Drea or Drea? Like, I'm, I feel like I'm saying it wrong. And I should have asked you in IG this morning, but I've been running on fumes. I've had the grandkid all week. Drina. Drea. No N though, right? Drea. Drea. Okay. Drea. <laughs> Some days, y'all. All right, well, Drea, let's get in the box, darling. Let's, uh, I, I am excited. We're probably going to go a little bit past 11 with this topic. Um, and this is, a, it's kind of a, a, a play on um, aces. Um, so it's going to, it's going to fit in perfect. But guys, if you, uh, we'll let her tell you the story. We'll, we'll honor the topic when she's ready. Good morning. Um, yeah. This is one of those topics, the first time that we talked about it, I like, I didn't like it. I'm not going to lie to you guys. The first conversation I had on here with, I do believe it was Sunny. Hello, hello. Um, I was not happy with how that whole thing was going down because I didn't have boundaries for myself. Um, so it, <laughs> boundaries are hard. Yeah. And I, I'm a little nervous about this topic too, cause I am so tired. So, um, I'm sorry, this thing keeps coming down and I'm kind of sad I missed Ace. Like I wanted to hear what he had to say, cause that's kind of an important topic too, especially on this app. So yeah, well, it will be on, it will be on YouTube. Jay does put them up there. So you do have a way to, um, yeah watch it later and i know that you just had a crazy late extra night at work so yes. thank you for coming home and still making time to be on here um so i will let you kind of dive into this and we'll go from there um so i'm gonna just ask a favor if you can just kind of guide me like i haven't seen this yet like i've oh, yeah. i've seen um i've always kind of wanted to do it because i think it's great to talk about these things like lessons you've learned um i think we're always learning lessons like like where do I start? Because I was I was torn between um, forgiveness and boundaries, and I really think they kind of go together. They do. They can go together. So, um, right, what do so, you? Yeah. So, what what made you pick this topic? Like, what? Where was your aha moment that, like, you know, I got to start making these changes and do these things to allow myself to be my true self? Yeah. Okay. So, um, you know, everyone has the story, right? Everyone's been through things. We have to understand that. And, and so I have my own story. I've, I've had a great life, but I've also had my trials and tribulations. And one of those is, um, I grew up in a very toxic household with an abusive narcissistic mother. Um, you know, and she was one of the most beautiful people. Like she was like, um, like fire. Fire can warm you. It can light the way. It can make, um, it can fill your tummy. It can do so many things and then it can burn you bad. It can leave you in the cold, right? And so that's kind of how I, I saw her. And, and um, you know, it, 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 we learn from our parents. We learn from the people um, that raise us. And, and I, um, I always thought that getting forgiveness, getting I'm sorry, or whatever. And I was never taught boundaries with that because she herself didn't, I don't think she had boundaries or, or knew what they were, um, you know, um, hurt people, hurt people. And so I was, I had to parent my parents, you know, um, and be whatever she needed me to be. Um, and so I, that's a one start with the boundaries, you know, I, I didn't know how to tell her like, this is not okay or, or whatever. Cause I didn't see her doing that. Um, but it got to a point in my life, you know, I had made some poor decisions with men and I had wanted to improve my life and I could never just quite put my finger on it, you know, cause there's so, there's so many layers to it. Um, and, and one big thing is I just, I realized that my mother was not, 
she had she didn't have the capacity to heal me in the way that I needed to be healed. Um, and so I had to find a way um, to forgive her. But it had nothing to do with her. Like if I was to go to her and say, hey, I forgive you. Well, that would do nothing but make that that makes people angry because you're you're still saying you're bad you hurt me but I forgive you for all the bad things that you do right yes so forgiveness is not for them you know that right no it, it's not them. no it, it isn't is so that you can mm -hmm. move on to be your best version of you I think that a lot of people struggle with that I still struggle with the definition of forgiveness um, I go back, I wish this thing would stay up. I'm like, ah, it keeps, <laughs> um, you know, uh, forgiveness is about allowing us to find healing. There's this great quote by um, Lily Tomlin, and I, I'm trying to remember exactly what it is, but um, forgiveness is um, uh, or not finding forgiveness is a way for us to um, wish for a better past or something like that and that makes total sense that's the best definition that i've ever like um really related to because that's all you're doing if you're just waiting for forgiveness from someone um you're just wishing for a better past and that's not nothing's going to change that right so um yeah um with my mom I, I had to really find um, empathy and I had to learn about like her, who she was, like her story and what hurt her so that I could, because I know my mom never meant to hurt me in the ways that she did. I just, I, I don't know. I think that some people are abusive and horrible and, and they want to be that way. And sometimes, you know, um, the angriest people are most often the most hurt people, you know? And so I, I really dug into talking to my, my grandmother, my father, her friend, you know, anyone, my aunt, you know, just learning about like what brought her to, to, to this point in her life and how lonely and sad she was and why I had to fill that role as a child. And so forgiveness for me was something that I learned. And this is a, my lesson that I had to learn is that it is not something that you can just say and it happens and it's fine. And like you, you, you get amnesia, like you forget everything and everything that they've ever done is, is it goes away. It does not. You, you are, it, you still can be angry, you know, and you have to find that empathy. And, you know, um, for me, it was, it's a daily thing sometimes. Yeah. I have to do it daily. Yeah. Yeah. You know, forgiveness is not a one-time thing. It's, it's something you work on daily. That was my biggest lesson. Yes. And I think with, with the forgiveness, something else that's important to mention, and this one, y'all, it, it, it 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 sunk me for a couple days <clears throat> so um i'm sorry if i do the same to you but that just means you really needed to hear it happiness is a choice what happened to you in your past mm -hmm. it is a choice to allow it to dictate your future or for <laughs> you to have learned from it and then again move on to the best version of you smiley said it to me first on here yeah. And y'all, when I got off, I cried because I was like, look, how can she? And I had asked, what do you mean happiness is a choice? She, she, had, she, she, she kind of laid out a pretty simple definition. And she goes, it doesn't matter what's going on around me. I can't change what others are doing. No. I choose to be happy. And yeah. I went. Yeah. Because yeah. realized that my lack of happiness was from my. People are going to do what they do, right? And I think if we don't forgive them, then all we're doing is robbing ourselves of peace and of healing. You cannot heal if you are still living in this space of they need to know what they did wrong. It is their responsibility to heal me. That's not fair to them. That is, maybe some people can come forward and say that, but I, I just, I feel like, I don't know, it does, is it really... You can't expect someone else to apologize for their behavior, but again, you can forgive them and move on. Don't yeah. for you don't have to, I'm not telling anyone to forget. 
Okay, I'm not telling anybody that That's you That's not what it's about. Me. No, no, okay. it's about like finding empathy and having courageous, courageous empathy mm -hmm. and, and um, self-love. And that is a boundary in itself. Yeah, to say, you know, it is not okay what happened, but I choose to be to take responsibility for my healing, and I will not allow this to happen any longer. If that's the boundary that you choose, now boundaries on in their, on their own are they're so all over the place. You know, they don't have to be set in stone, and uh, or they have to be, or and 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 boundaries often feel like. Um, for me, anyway, it feels like I'm hurting people. Sometimes. Yeah. And sometimes maybe you are, you know? So oh, that was my big lesson in forgiveness. And I'm still learning. I'm, I don't know if I ever learned my lessons. I'm <laughs> but, yeah. I, I, I've, I've, uh, I've, I've um, done the hard way for most of my life. My, my lessons have all been learned the hard way because I always knew better and you couldn't tell me and I got this and I don't need any help and I don't need anybody. And y'all, that is exhausting. fear-based. That is so fear-based. I still struggle with that. It's like um, waiting for the other shoe to drop. Like there's, yeah, there's conditions. Like there's no such thing really. I think it's unconditional love, but conditions don't have to be bad. Conditions maybe can be, um, we can flip the narrative and call them boundaries instead of conditions, right? But um, it, yeah, it, I think that having that hyper independence is a, is a way to self-protect and to avoid vulnerability. And, and forgiveness is a very vulnerable state to be in. And, and, and people think that you, you have, you have to stop being angry and you have to forget and all of those things and, and you don't and, and angry and, and anger in itself is, is a beautiful emotion. It teaches us so much. It is our alarm system to tell us, Hey, something is wrong here. Something is happening that is not okay. Like, you know, your fire detectors like going off your smoke detectors they beep 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 you know that's kind of what anger is so if we if we can recognize like there is something that is on fire in my life i need to put out you know it, am i doing it is someone else doing it you know or whatever and then how do i stop that so anger i don't always use it wisely i break dishes and stuff but i don't break them on people <laughs> I I still have to learn. I I shut down when I get angry because I I don't have a like a, a mediation, right? Like when I'm angry and you're not going to listen to what I have to say, I go from 0 to 100, right? So I avoid conflict at almost <laughs> all costs. Because I still, at my age, know, and 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 the thing is, I'm not going to regret what I say, but oh, chances are others will, because I'm going to, you know what I, like, I bite my tongue a lot, like with my family and my friends, I bite my tongue a lot, and I come with evidence and proof and backup for all the things, or you know what I mean, so like, because there's people in my life that have done a lot of wrong, and they, you know, between thief and and, and abuse and, and things like that. And I'll never forget, but will I sit down at Christmas time and we'll probably be at the same table? Probably. If that's, if that's right for you and you know, maybe when the time comes finding a way to set a gentle boundary, you know, boundary. I only talk to you at the table on Christmas because I've got nothing else to say. I'm cordial right. for the sake of the family. Right. But I don't need to be, I, I, I'm not going to go out of my way. I'm not going to respond to your messages because you, you have not acknowledged, accepted, or done anything, but continue to try in, in with the sick behavior. You know what I mean? Like being right. you, you, you know, abusive and using, I'm um, not necessarily physical, but you know, more, more of an emotional thing. Um, and I, I, I won't allow it. And, you know, I fight with certain people because I don't talk to these people anymore, but that's my boundary for myself that I had to set to keep my sanity because yes. I'm not going to sit here and be told that I'm this and I'm that, you know, and that I don't need to do this. I'm not, 
family, just because that their family doesn't mean that they have the right to bully you. Right. That that blood does not does not constitute bullying. Not at all. So, yeah, you know, um, it, I I had to go completely no contact with my mom. That was, and that was one of the hardest decisions I ever made. I felt like the worst person ever. That was the first boundary I really set. And to stick to it, I, I felt evil. Oh, and, and, you know, she, she, she didn't like it. So she definitely added to me, like making me feel not, I don't like to say making me, but um, adding to those feelings of, of being evil. Those, those guilt, you know, or whatever, um, you know, um, and oh, he said something earlier and I, I wish I could go back to it, like going from uh, zero to a hundred when you're angry. Like I, I do the, I do the same thing. I do the same thing. And that's why I had to go no contact because it was a toxic behavior. Um, and, and you, you, <laughs> I'm a pretty chill person most of the time. So like, for me to, to, to be around a certain person and feel that I'm going to go from that zero to a hundred, it's an extremely uneasy feeling because that's not who I am. Right. Anybody that, and yeah, y'all have seen me. I, I can handle my own. I can, I can, I can run at the mouth when needed, but 95% of the time we just sit and we talk and we're chill because that's who I am. But I'm, I'm not by any means afraid to defend myself, stand up for myself or, protect the people that I care about there. There's nothing that will ever stop that. So some people, yeah, y'all have seen it because sometimes people go after people that I care about. And that's not something that I'm going to be able to sit there and sleep on. I'm not gonna be able to sleep if I don't do something about it and stop it. Right. Like I, yes. Okay. So I, I'm okay. I remember like what I was thinking about when you said that you let you hold your tongue in certain situations. You don't like to cause conflict because you know how you can be. And I was just, it, it that's another lesson. Like, so my mom recently passed, um, and um, it. I no longer have a relationship with my sister. She set a boundary that I don't like. I am struggling with. I don't agree with it, but I have to respect it because it's her truth. It's her truth, and it hurts me. And and I can yell and scream and try to like get her to understand me, but she will not hear me. And it is a waste of my time and it, it, it hinders all of our healing, but she is the ultimate peacekeeper. So when you said, you know, you bite your tongue and and sometimes, you know, you don't want to fight because you don't want to create those issues. um, It, to me, it just, it reminded me of something I told her because she's, she hates conflict. And I said, (laughs) sometimes when you avoid conflict, like when you are trying to create peace, you actually end up creating war. So choose your level of uncomfortableness because it's going to get uncomfortable. And that is, that's self-love, I think. Yeah. But that's, you know, that's my opinion, you know, and maybe sometimes not saying and keeping the peace is really the, the best thing, but I think it also can be really unhealthy. Yeah. I, I, I don't, and I, my my feelings are very open. Everybody knows how I feel about you. I'm the There's same. Not one person mm-hmm. in my life that questions how I feel about them because I am very clear on that. Um, Vulnerability is such a beautiful thing, but it is. Uh, I don't know about you, but it's, it's hurt me in the past because I don't think everyone deserves that gift. And I, I am so open. Like I, I, I agree with what you're saying. Like I am an open book. I'll cry on my stream. I'll talk about my feelings and I have, I don't really have shame. Um, I, I mean a little bit, we all struggle with that, but I also like, I'm trying to normalize, you know, that those things happen. Like we have feelings, we go through things, you know? Um, but but maybe it's not for everyone to know sometimes. <laughs> right. Right. So, right. yes. It's okay, Larry, if you're stalking me. I like to see you. <laughs> <laughs> we have a lot of comments today. I couldn't keep up with some of them for a minute there. I'm like, dang it. <laughs> I can't. And if you try to scroll back, I'll end up hitting the wrong thing. And, oh, God, I'm terrible with that. Too. Yeah. 
No, I've been totally engaged in this. I just really apologize. It's funny because I have all of these things that I wanted to say about it. And like, you know, I'm a nurse and I work on a heavy floor and I did not sit down. I didn't eat a lunch. I haven't slept in like 15 hours. And I'm like, well, I'm going to try. <laughs> you know, there's this great, there's this great poem that I, or piece of spoken word that I like to listen to often. It kind of grounds me. Um, it's called how to be a person. And there's something in there that he says, like, if you're waiting for forgiveness, then be prepared to wait. And you have to accept that for some people, forgiveness is hard. And I love that because, um, that that's true. Like, you just be prepared to not be healed and not find peace and and because and you you are not getting that courageous empathy that i think forgiveness really calls for if you um can't understand that it can be hard for some people to get there and they may never yeah. be prepared to wait you know yeah that's so. that's what i that's what i said guys it's your ha happiness is a choice and forgiveness is for you, not for them. Um, waiting for someone to apologize for their wrongdoings is going, it's probably going to lead to disappointment because I'm going to say you got a 20% chance that that's going to happen. Um, uh, girl, I still, I will scream and fight because I feel like I need to, I need to be seen. I need to be heard. I need to be understood. But I understand that that is the, the toxic, my toxic, toxic undoing. You know, when I said I was going to break generational trauma, I realized that like I was not seen and heard often as a child or growing up because maybe I didn't have boundaries. And so I will, when I feel misunderstood or unheard or uncared for, like I will, it's, it's not healthy, you know, um, and I've worked so hard to not be that way. And recently I've had a little bit of a relapse and I've had to forgive myself with that and have that mercy and that grace with me, um, you know? Um, Cause you're right. Some people, they won't, they just don't have the capacity to listen or hear or see you in the way that you feel like you need to be. And sometimes guys, let, let's be honest. Sometimes it, it, with parental situations, maybe they were, maybe they were raised in a certain way that mm -hmm. didn't allow them and then so they did the best that they could so yeah. sometimes they don't realize that they did wrong or or they didn't see that it was wrong or they did the best that they could in some situations and, and i believe my mom did you know that's why i said i had to look at, deep into like her history to understand uh, where her pain came from and hurt people hurt people and that's why i say generational trauma I'm breaking, I'm trying to break generational trauma because I, I see where it came from. I see this need, you know, people like get confused about like, okay, so there's narcissism, then there's narcissist, narcissistic personality disorder. Well, we're all a little narcissistic, but um, it's not about like loving ourselves and being full of ourselves. It's actually a lack of love. People who are narcissistic do not love themselves, you know, they, and, and, you know, I, I feel like that's where that came from. My mom, you know, she was constantly seeking this outside validation for love. Um, and, and she learned that from my grandma and who knows where that came from. And so I have, and I, and I, I do, I work on it. I'm, I try to break the cycle, but I, I have my moments. This week, I've really been beating myself up because I have I've not been doing so well. But this past year, I, you know, with her passing and my sister deciding not to have a relationship with me, um, you know, it's like I I made so many strides, and we have to celebrate even if it's like a point zero 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 one percent success. We have to celebrate that because that's amazing. We can't. Perfection. Yes, yes. But I've been really, yeah, a little bit of self hate here, a little bit of feeling like, oh, well, okay, because I, I, I have reverted back to some of those things, but those are going to happen. So, but you, the difference now is, is you see it, and we have to remember, and I have to remind myself a lot. Um, like when I, like when I have a teenage daughter, I don't know if any of y'all raise teenagers, but they're god 
godforsaking mean. <laughs> They're cutthroat. I'm gonna rip your heart out. Stop <laughs> on it. Mean. Okay. So I just do cats will, and catch up. I don't know. I will take a lot and I will remain calm because I have to remember that I am her safe spot. She knows there's nothing that she can say or do that's gonna stop me from loving her. So she oh knows God, when she comes home, <laughs> she holds it all in and holds it all in and then she gets home and I'm like, hi, sweetheart, how was your day? Do you, do you want a snack? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I'm like, oh my God. Oh, but what a beautiful I, thing to, to yeah, say yeah. you want to be her safe spot. Oh. So, <laughs> so, but sometimes guys, and, and especially like this last week or whatever, I caught myself a couple times. I'm like, I've had enough. And I'm screaming back at her. And I'm like, that's not how you do Did it. Did you I'm take your slipper off you and, and smack her with it? <laughs> so I apologize. So eventually I calmed down, walked away, whatever. And I had to go back. And even though she's never once apologized to me for screaming in my face, I had to go and apologize to her because I felt that that was not okay. Right. So we're so you had to ask for forgiveness for her and say, I take accountability. Mm -hmm. No, well, it wasn't even I needed her forgiveness. She'd already forgiven me. She's my teenage daughter. We yell at each other. I'm her mother. I said, we're going to piss each other off regularly. If she's not pissed off at me, I'm not doing my job. And if she ain't pissed me off, she's not acting like a normal teenager. And I'm going to be a little concerned. But there's that line in, I need to show her what I expect. And what accountability looks it like. Right away. Because at some point she's going to, you know, I'm going to not apologize when she's older. And I'm going to go, when was the last time you apologized to me? And then in that moment, she'll go, but I've apologized. Can, uh, time, right? So I that'll be our moment for her when she's done with this hormonal horror. Fudge. <laughs> oh, I love her so God. much. <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, we actually, yeah, my daughter does not have a phone because she won't do what she's supposed to do. So I refuse to buy her another phone after her last one broke. And until she does I her chores. Important. I was never held like accountable for my good or my bad things in, in growing up. And I think that even affected me because it's like, I, you know, was on an honor student my whole entire life. You know, I did volunteer work. I, I did all these things. And, um, and artists and I showed in galleries and like I wasn't had held accountable for that but also like I did a lot of bad shit too and I wasn't necessarily held accountable in the way that taught me what I needed to learn as a young growing mind you know um either way and so yeah. I think that's where my feelings of not you know being felt like I'm seen or heard came from you know it's it's hard as a parent to discipline your child because it. But you, it, I, it's so important. I believe it, it's so important. It's hard, but it's important, right? Because like you punish yourself, right? Like because if that kid can't go out, you're stuck too. Um, <laughs> you know what I mean? But like, isn't that, okay, isn't that a boundary in a way? And you're teaching her boundaries yeah. and consequences. Yep. You know. Yep. So I don't. It, it, teenagers, kids, they're hard. I try to be fairly lenient because I feel like my parents were sort of over strict, right? So I pick my battles. Like her room is atrocious right now. <laughs> Mine too. <laughs> I could I could get on her to clean it, but that's not a fight that I want to have again and again and again. So one day she's gonna want someone to come over and I'm gonna tell her not to your rooms clean. Then mm -hmm. it'll get done. But I can't. There's just, I work seven days. Well, a week. that's self care too, a little bit. Gosh, I feel like I, like, I, my back, black background is just like, where's, yeah, that's you're like a floating head up here. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to sit outside, but um, I was like, I don't have time to put on a hoodie and go sit outside. Aww. It's a little cold here. Yeah. Yeah. Kid, kids are hard. Boundaries are hard. Life is hard, but, I'll, I'll say it again, you know, happiness is a choice. And uh, so, okay, so I want to talk like boundaries. Um, there's a right, do you think there's a, a right and a wrong way to do it? Because I do. Um, I, I think that sometimes they can come across as almost like, um, 
uh, like verbally abusive, maybe if you're just putting someone down and then making an excuse and calling it a boundary. Well, yeah, I agree. I think that boundaries need to be set healthy, you know, like, like, like with my daughter, she knows this is what I expect of her. And she knows that this needs to be done every day and blah, blah, blah. Right. Um, yeah. But if you're yeah. avoiding situations and avoiding, you know, we're taking responsibility for things or having difficult conversations and labeling, labeling it as a boundary that drives me nuts. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. You're, that's, that's just an insult, you know, at that point, um, a boundary is something that you set and you stick to, um, and you don't let people cross it. Cause once you let someone cross it once, they're going to keep pushing and they'll try to do it again and again. Okay, and again. So I want to, I want to, yeah, let's talk about that a little bit. Cause with that, I'm like, I like to call, I, I'm a big believer in first cultivating curiosity because sometimes we run to setting a boundary like no before we really find out like where is this coming from right. did i fully understand this or did i just assume that this is what happened and now this is a boundary that this is this because this has happened to me with one of my favoriteest people on this app um you know and i i feel like if she may, if we could have had a conversation there still would have been a boundary there, but I felt like I just got pushed off. Like, nope, this is the way it is, period. And it was absolutely not that way. Right. So um, for me, I, I, I don't know. Um, eventually, you do have to stick to a boundary, but I think that boundaries can just also be like conversations. Right. Communication. Yeah. And that's a boundary I have with people. If you're going to be, you know, in my life on the regular, we need to converse and I need to know what's going on with you. You need to know what's going on with me. And that's like the people that keep up with that is generally how I know that you are true. And that that's my boundary. Like if, if you sit here on, on here and you tell me that you're my best friend and blah, 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 blah. But then I don't talk to you off the app anymore. Like you don't reach out to me and I don't talk to you. Then like, so, okay, I'm gonna, I love playing devil's advocate with you. So with that one, with my mental health struggles, I've gone into deep isolation, like not being able to get out of bed. Um, and it has affected some of my friendships. And I've had to take accountability and say, I'm sorry, I, I'm, I do really care about you. I know that I'm not being the friend that you need. I hope that you stick around. And some people have not. There's exceptions to all the things, but if somebody is always like, I'm there for you, but then every time you call them, they don't pick up the phone, they don't return your call, you text and you don't get anything back, but then we're on here and they're like, hey, how are you, blah, blah. Uh -uh. I've been trying to reach out to you for however many days or whatever, and you were nowhere to be found. I can see you read my message, lady. And that's a right, constant, you know, over and over. Now I get it, like with me. I, between my grandson and my grandma and my daughter and my life, I don't, I'm, I just am too busy sometimes, but right. that's because these, these things have to come before anyone or anything else. And that's a choice I've had to make because they're, they need me, unfortunately, or for, well, they need me more than you guys need me, not fortunately or unfortunately. No, I believe that real life will always trump the virtual life. Like, Sorry. Sorry, like I love this platform for the many beautiful things it's brought to my life, but real life will always trump what we do here. Period. Yeah, it's it's you know, Greg, Grandma fell in March and my my life was flipped upside down. I went from streaming every day, all day to I barely get to see you guys. And it was hard at first. I'm not lying. My first couple months, I was kind of down in the dumps because I didn't know what to do with myself. Not right now. Um, but then you adjust and you adapt and, and you start to feel better about your choices because grandma's taking care of. I've got enough money. I'm covering the bills. I know the grandkids taken care of when he's with me. Mom's at work. We get to do fun things. He keeps me on my toes. I'm supposed to feel young, but he makes me feel old. Um, you know, all the things. <laughs> and so, but I do also love being on here, which is why I will not give up the show as long as they'll allow me to do it because I love coming on here. I want to um, come back when I'm a little more prepared. I'm so sorry. I've just been like the, 
been good though. I've, I've been very open and very vulnerable about my life, but I, I think that most people who have been, spent time around me, um, you know, I, they, they know, um, you know, about my toxic, um, relationship with my mother and, and my struggles with my own mental health and how that's affected me and how hard it is. But yes, like every day I have to make a choice and I, sometimes it's, it's hard. Like sometimes getting out of bed, I'm not making, I don't make that choice. It's, it, it, it feels almost impossible. Some days. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I get that. But the thing is, is we, I feel like you, you and I kind of in that way might be the same is that we, we have our moments, we, we do what we have to do and then we shelf it, right? We deal, we, we move on and you have to deal, right? You have to keep moving. Forward. I'm, I'm getting better at that. I'm getting better at that. You know, I've had to let go of a lot of things, but that's because my big thing is, is the, having the mercy and the grace with myself that I give so freely and openly and lovingly to others. Nope. <laughs> yeah, I that that's probably been my hardest lesson. In, it is. In life. It is a hard lesson, but giving and loving myself. That's been the hardest. And the thing mercy and the grace. Yes, yes. Because yeah. I can, like, I love my friends, my kids. I do anything for. They could do anything to me, and I'll forgive them. But. I don't make one healthy dinner and I don't sleep that night. Or if I forgot to wash her gym clothes, you know, I'll lay there and, you know, and it'll, I'll stress out over for three days. You know what I mean? Like anything I do or don't do that I'm supposed to do or, you know, whatever that's doesn't go the way it's supposed to, like I'll eat myself alive over it. And like, realistically, it's not that big of a deal. You know what it I mean? It really isn't like you are. I'm sorry. You're not like, a stepford wife like that would be really creepy yeah i'm not perfect i'm gonna make no my and there is no such it. thing as perfection i think that there there is beauty in the imperfection there is beauty in the journey and the healing and anybody who knows me knows that i've got the memory of a goldfish and the attention span of like a squirrel so i do my best <laughs> but I don't know. I don't know what that is, but I know that I have ADD. I, <laughs> so. I have a terrible memory. I, I don't like birthdays and stuff like that. Like anything that most people would remember, I don't. Yeah. I, I don't do it on purpose. I really, truly, honestly don't. What was that? I, I don't know. I was like, <laughs> that was weird. It was telling me like I didn't have internet. Like it did that. Maybe it's saying, get this weird floating head out of the box. Like, I cannot no. handle it. I need to put some color on. It's what? No, creeping you, me out. You, you did amazing. And this is an awesome topic. Um, I think I probably needed it um, a lot. Um, but um, before I let you go, is there anything else you wanted to add? I know you've had a long night. You're probably hungry. You said you didn't get lunch. So I don't, I don't want to hold you too much longer. Um, but was there anything else you wanted to add to that? No, topic. there were so many things I wanted to add to that, but you know what? It doesn't matter. It was a free flowing conversation and, and we talked about like, yeah, forgiveness boundaries and all of the beautiful, important things that, that we need to do, you know, and anyone in the comments, you know, if you want to stop by and, and talk about boundaries or I'll come by, we can talk about like, Hey, this doesn't feel right. Or this is a boundary or or, you know, what does forgiveness mean? Like, we can continue the conversation anytime. Here or there, wherever. Would love it. Well, tell these folks, when do you stream? Do you have any other shows going on? <laughs> I'm a rebel. I do what I want. Um, <laughs> it's really hard with my schedule. So, because I do work night shift, I, I, am, I find myself streaming in the, uh, so I call the virtual streets in the dark back alley ways of the virtual streets and in the middle of the night doing strange things. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I wish that I had a consistent schedule, but it's almost impossible. Like I'm, I'm a travel nurse. I'm trying to get, you know, a staff position. Um, and I'm trying to get dazed. I have no idea when I'll stream next. Um, I do a lot of fun Zodiac stuff. So we're trying to build on that. Um, I like to objectify men. Just let it go. Uh, I love having DJs in the box and just partying and, and dancing and having fun. 
<laughs> um, ever since I got my ba top badge, though, I've I've been like kid, been trying to behave, but um, yeah, <laughs> really <not> for that. <laughs> Don't talk to me that way. I'll talk. I'll talk right back, princess. <laughs> All right. Well, again, thank you so much. You guys make sure you have her favorite and go check her out. Um, I'll definitely be stopping by to say hi. Um, but thank oh, you so much. Yeah, I'm gonna try more mornings. Um, you know, because when I get off of work, I can for a little bit. Um, but normally, yeah, you're gonna find me at like anywhere between eleven to six in the morning. <laughs> um, yeah. And I'm trying to do more featured shows. I refuse to do them for a while. So this is my second. Well, yeah. Thank you. Wow, I feel, I feel special. <laughs> thank you. I, this is, and this show's not easy to be on. You, you, like you said, you I loved it. I, I want, I would love to do it again, like, and be ready. Cause I love talking about life and realness love to have you on again just let us know when you're up for it again and uh you know it's like i said it's not a, this show's not for, it's it's a lot of people listen to it but it's not for everybody to be on because a lot of people are not so comfortable in talking about making you know the, what makes them vulnerable right um or uh what where we've messed up because you know nobody messes up obviously everyone's perfect what <sighs> this kid's begging for my attention thank you so much i appreciate you again oh, guys yeah. favorite her favorite everybody um and i hope you have an amazing day go get some food and get some rest <laughs> absolutely gotta work again tonight so bye bye honey ah guys what a good show see it never ceases to fail no matter how i wake up and stressed out i've been <sighs> I always feel better after my show. Don't no 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 no. Don't start acting up. My show's over, so you can I can put your show on out here or whatever. Oh, I forgot my picture. Oh, you want to go take a bath? Because why? Okay, so are you gonna be in the bedroom watching it, or are you gonna go in the bath? When I didn't take a nap, I was going to call you when you were done watching my show, but didn't want to. I forgot.